Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. I am Dr. Monica. Today's class will be on apoptosis. So in the previous classes we had dealt about reversible irreversible cell injury and the outline uh, about necrosis and then we also touched upon the outline of apoptosis. So what is apoptosis? It is nothing but a form of cell death, right? It is a form of cell death and it is a programmed cell death. What do I mean by the word program? It means that it is being tightly regulated by a certain ser uh, set of genes. It doesn't happen randomly like that of a necrosis. It has set pathways under which this apoptosis happens and these are controlled by genes. So apoptosis as such it means falling off. The little meaning of apoptosis actually falling off. So the characteristic features of apoptosis was the cell will rather shrink here and there will be no membrane damage and when no membrane damage is present it will not lead to any inflammation. This is actually just the opposite of necrosis because in necrosis we saw the cell will get swollen up and the membrane will damage and that will invite the inflammatory cells. So this is the opposite of necrosis and it is an active process which uses ATP. and. Unlike necrosis, it can happen as both a physiological and a pathological path. Okay, so uh, necrosis was only pathological, but here it can be involved in both the physiological and pathological process. So let's see examples of physiological and pathological causes. Uh, when I was mentioning about cellular adaptation atrophy, I must have mentioned during embryogenesis, the cells, the remnants, whatever embryological remnants were present before the birth, they have to undergo atrophy. So those unwanted things must undergo atrophy and that atrophy was done by this apoptosis, remember. So in embryogenesis, that is notochordal development or during thyroglossal duct involution and many others. So whenever this has to involute or it has undergone maturation, its work is complete, it has to get destroyed. Then in that case, during its development, it is apoptosis which comes into play. Also, uh, in the development of fingers when fingers are developed it doesn't happen like this okay it happens as it looks like a mass of uh, some uh, material okay so in between these two fingers also there will be some material when this material which are present in between the fingers they are broken down only we involve into fingers so that is uh, because this uh, in between material is getting dyed because of the uh, apoptosis so when the, this doesn't happen properly when this apoptosis doesn't happen properly it will result in something called as a syndactyly that is fused fingers there is no individual fingers it will just look like a fused fingers so coming to the next example which is involution of the hormone dependent tissue uh, suppose the person is a postmenopausal female. So postmenopause, there will be no estrogen, right? So without estrogen, what will happen? The ovary will undergo atrophy, and the breast will also undergo atrophy. This again happens because of apoptosis. And also a normal example, menses. During menstruation, what happens is endometrial shedding is present. So when endometrial is uh, shedding, it has to die. So those endometrial cells die, and it is shed off during menses because of apoptosis. And next is removal of self-reactive lymphocytes. So uh, during maturation, the, both the B cells and T cells, they will be put to test. When they re react against the self-antigens, our own antigens, then it is of no use, right? It will be killing our own body. So those self-reactive T cells and B cells must be destroyed. And thus destruction happens by apoptosis. Then comes end of inflammation. So uh, during acute inflammation, neutrophils are present and during chronic inflammation, lymphocytes are present, right? So now the inflammatory process is all over. It has all clear, it has cleared up all the debris. So now that it, uh, this inflammation must be put to a stop. Otherwise, it will be uh, continuously damaging, right? So it must be put to a stop. So during that time, this neutrophils and lymphocytes has to die. Then Only then it will come to a stop. So this also happens by apoptosis. Coming to the pathological examples of apoptosis, first thing is viral infection. So whenever a cell is infected with virus, that cell will undergo apoptosis. The most classical example is that of a viral hepatitis. Okay, viral hepatitis. We have this image. Can you appreciate this image? This is the liver cells actually surrounding. These are the normal liver cells. But here, this cell, what is this cell? It is also a hepatocyte, but then it has 
greatly shrunken in size and the cell is comparably uh, compared to the nearby cell it is having dense eosinophilic cytoplasm so it is shrunken with increased eosinophilia and nucleus also if you see it is all this nucleus is this big but then here the nucleus is only this big it is all shrunken and condensed so this is characteristic of an apoptosis and it is nothing but an apoptotic body it is actually an apoptotic body which is given a special name of councilman body so this councilman body is nothing but a, a, a apoptotic body seen in viral hepatitis and this image has been asked n number of times in mcq as an image based question also so moving on to the next pathological example of uh, apoptosis uh, which is misfolded proteins so we all know that proteins are synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum and once they are synthesized there is something called as chaperons these chaperons are the ones which are responsible for the proper folding of the proteins only when the proteins are folded properly it is functional otherwise it is of no use so whenever there is misfolding of this protein due to some reason so misfolded proteins will trigger something called as an unfolded protein response and that will eventually lead to the endoplasmic reticulum stress so when endoplasmic reticulum is getting stressed the cell, cell will undergo apoptosis remember misfolded proteins will always lead to apoptosis some examples of diseases in which this misfolded proteins has been implicated as the pathogenesis are alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency so it is a liver disease actually liver and lungs are affected in lungs it will result in the formation of emphysema so alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency then we have cystic fibrosis then some neurodegenerative disorders like neurodegenerative disorders like alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease and huntington's disease one other example is familial hypercholesterolemia okay the next example will be a killing of a tumor cell whenever a tumor is a tumor cell is there it the host tissue will uh, try to kill it right and that happens mostly because of this um, apoptosis and here mostly that too it is a de death receptor pathway which is being activated we'll discuss about it in uh, coming uh, coming session so the next one is a duct obstruction whenever there is a duct and there is an obstruction what will happen the secretions cannot pass through the past the get past the obstruction so when the secretions are continuously getting accumulated it will lead to the injury of the proximal tissue which was the parenchyma of the uh, gland uh, which has secreted it right so suppose there is a salivary gland duct obstruction salivary duct obstruction it will lead to the injury or uh, to the salivary gland parenchyma so the salivary gland parenchyma will undergo cell injury resulting in cell death by apoptosis so moving on to uh, the next example in which graft versus host disease or in a cellular uh, graft rejection again apoptosis is the one which is being implicated now we have dealt with all the examples of physiological and pathological apoptosis most importantly remember this councilman bodies which is the apoptotic body and again misfolded proteins which al always results in the formation of apoptosis now uh, i was telling you it was a apoptosis is a programmed cell death because it was tightly controlled by certain pathways and certain genes so we'll see about what are the genes which are implicated in apoptosis we have pro apoptotic genes we have anti apoptotic genes and we have something called as stress sensors it is the balance between these three which actually helps in the cell to uh, maintain its homeostatic state state suppose in a normal cell it is the cell must not undergo apoptosis right it's in a normal cell it is the anti apoptotic genes which are up regulated and the apoptotic genes which will be down regulated so that is the normal state however when the cell is undergoing some stress some injury so this injury will be detected by these stress sensors which are the bh3 only proteins these proteins will uh, identify that the cell is undergoing some stress and that will in turn change the balance towards increase in the apoptosis and decrease in the anti apoptotic gene so let's see one by one what are the pro apoptotic genes the most important one is the p53 then bac then bax then we have bcl excess and then glucocorticoids glucocorticoids also stimulate the 
apoptosis so what happens when there is a cell injury uh, p53 and uh, p53 protein will be activated it is the master regulator right so it will get activated initially it will try to uh, under, make the cell undergo repair but if the repair is unsuccessful it will the cell it will trigger cell death by apoptosis so p53 is a pro apoptotic gene the most important one then coming to anti apoptotic genes the most important example here is the bcl2 other than that we have bcl xl mcl1 and here the sex steroids are actually anti apoptotic bcl2 if you remember it is also implicated in some uh, some lymphoma which is the follicular lymphoma in follicular lymphoma we have the translocation 14 18 in which this bcl2 upregulation is present 18 translocation 18th chromosome uh, is the location of this bcl2 so it is upregulated since it is an anti apoptotic gene whenever it is getting upregulated the cells will not die the tumor cells the follicular lymphoma tumor cells it will not die right it is preventing the cell from getting apoptosis uh, so this follicular lymphoma has this pcl2 over expression and that will prevent the cell from dying and another important thing about this bcl2 is that in memory b cells in memory b cells memory b cells must not die right only if, if it doesn't die it can retain the memory and uh, stay for longer right so for, uh, in order to prevent itself from apoptosis these memory b cells will express bcl2 so that they don't die and this is regulated by a nerve growth factor okay so one other thing i want to stress here is about the mcl1 mcl1 is not it, it actually is uh, conferring chemo resistance to tumor cells tumor cells they sometimes resist chemotherapy and the uh, it is it is actually bad for the patient right so this chemo resistance is because the tumor cells they start expressing mcl1 okay mcl1 it is an anti apoptotic thing so the cell cannot die by this chemotherapy it will not die by apoptosis so mcl1 is is responsible for the chemo resistance of uh, tumor cells and all this has been asked as uh, mcq questions that is why i am stressing it again and again in chemotherapy actually whenever chemotherapy is given it can trigger both apoptosis and necrosis but apoptosis is the most important one so uh, what are the stress sensors i was talking about it is the bh3 only proteins so we have bim bid bad puma and noxa all these five things are the cell stress uh, stress sensors so whenever the cell is undergoing stress these ones will identify that the cell has to undergo apoptosis now so the next thing about apoptosis is it is caspase dependent it is the most important thing about uh, apoptosis the final thing which uh, leads to the cell death by apoptosis is the caspase so what is this caspase caspase is ace means it is an enzyme so ace means it is an enzyme what is this asp it means that it cleaves after aspartate asp stands for aspartate cleaves after this aspartate residue wherever aspartate residue is present this enzyme will cleave after that c stands for cysteine ready residue this cysteine is present at the active site of the enzyme so c is for cysteine asp is for cleaving after the aspartate residue and ace is the enzyme so this activation of this caspase enzymes is the hallmark of apoptosis it is rightly called as the um, uh, hallmark of apoptosis it is a very very important mcq while in neurons we don't have this caspases so how does apoptosis happen there so the hallmark of neuronal apoptosis is activation of something called as aif which is apoptosis inducing factor okay apoptosis inducing factor is the one which is responsible for neuronal apoptosis so how does this apoptosis progress it actually has two mechanisms firstly the initiation will happen under two pathways intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway this will further culminate in the execution phase so let's see what is this intrinsic and extrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway is the one which happens in the mitochondria so it is also called as the mitochondrial pathway while extrinsic pathway is also called as the death receptor pathway so let's see about the caspases which are responsible for this intrinsic extrinsic and the executor phases okay so initiator caspases are caspases 8 9 and 10 okay so this will in turn activate the executor caspases which is caspases 3 6 and 7 okay 
uh, for this initiator caspases we have two mechanisms i told intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway so the intrinsic pathway which happened in the mitochondria here it is the caspase 9 which is getting activated while the extrinsic pathway which was the death receptor pathway here it is the caspase 8 and 10 which is getting activated actually it uh, 8 is not present in the humans 10 is the one which is present in the humans so how do you remember this just take the first two letters of extrinsic e and x so e is for 8 e starting letter of 8 is also e so 8 then x this looks like the roman letter 10 so that will stand for 10 so extrinsic pathway it is caspase 8 and 10 which is getting activated and intrinsic pathway it was the uh, caspase 9 which is getting activated so both of this caspase 9 caspase 8 and 10 all of this will actually go and activate this caspase 3 6 and 7 out of which the caspase 3 is the most important one and this uh, uh, executor caspases when they are activated they will result in the cell death by apoptosis okay we will see about the mechanism of apoptosis that is how this initiation happens intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway how this execution happens in the next video Till now we had seen about what is apoptosis, the basics of apoptosis, the genes regulating the apoptosis, then what are the caspases which were responsible for it and the examples of physiological and the pathological apoptosis. So see you in the next video which is uh, on the mechanisms of apoptosis. I hope you like this video. If you like my video, consider subscribing and sharing it to your friends. Thank you.